and welcome. Today's guest is a former TV retail host turned seven-figure transformational trainer and CEO of Michelle Soro Inc. She is the founder of Liberated Leadership and Live Sales Mastery. Her trainings have generated over $20 million in revenue for her clients who range from emerging experts to established entrepreneurs, Hollywood celebrities, professional athletes, and even a United States presidential candidate. She is the co-founder of the Podcast Accelerator and the host of the Fire and Soul podcast, a top podcast in self-development. Using her voice to facilitate contemplation, reflection, awareness, consciousness, and sovereignty, she is on a mission to empower millions to awaken to their infinite potential. Welcome, Michelle Soro. You are on fire, girlfriend. You have recently been going through your own great awakening, and now you are leading the charge on truly living a life that's free by design. Congratulations, girlfriend. You are amazing. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Ellen. Congratulations on this show. What an honor to be one of your first few guests. It's so fun to be here, and I'm just so happy for you. Oh, well, thank you. Now, I want to dive into the genesis of the great awakening that you have been going through. And we will get to that in just a second. But first, I want to circle back to some of those earlier pivotal moments that really prepared you in your journey for this time. So in your former life, you had a long and in, uh, illustrious career as a television retail host. Well, but what made you walk away from that and step into entrepreneurship? That's a great question. And I, I wouldn't say that I thought I was really walking away. I was being called. Mm -hmm. And the way that that happened is I had finally landed my, at that time, absolute dream job on my dream show. I wanted to work on Extra. It's a primetime entertainment news show that's been out for, gosh, over 30 years now. And I finally landed in that landed that gig. And it was a once a week segment of mine. Um, it was a shopping segment and I got to work with, you know, Mario Lopez and all the things. And it was super fun. And there was a lot of conversation around uh, um, accelerating my role uh, and expanding it into a weekend correspondent. And then I got invited to their holiday party, but I had tickets to um, Date with Destiny, which is a six day seminar with Tony Robbins. This was December of 2017. And I remember thinking, Tony, in my mind, we didn't actually chat, like help me turn this one day a week gig into a full time, maybe even award winning role on extra. And by day four of Date with Destiny, I dropped to my knees and I started sobbing because I heard this call, this voice, this message, however you want to refer to it as it was clear. And it was and a television host has been realized but you're now here for so much more. That was your little girl dream. It was how you wanted to know that you mattered and you were worthy in life and all that was true, but it was shocking. And um, with my heart cracked wide open and exhausted from the event, I just sat with it. And then the next day someone said, well, you should start a podcast. And I was like, a podcast? <laughs> I thought that they were reserved for celebrities and big mega brands. And that's where it began. So I was just called into uh, leadership and coaching and being an entrepreneur. I would now ref reference myself as a spiritual entrepreneur because it's all an inside job no matter what you're doing in life. And, um, and so I stayed on Extra for three more years. And the gift in that was that it was a one day a week segment that actually paid my bare minimum bills and you know enabled me to be able to explore uh, becoming an entrepreneur and starting masterminds and uh, growing my podcast. And so God was so good, Ellie, that's all I can say. I had three years to really expand. And then by the fourth year, my revenue had like five X to what I got on extra. And I was just like, you know what? I'm ready to let go, but I had signed, signed a contract. So just to wrap this up really quickly, uh, then COVID hit and all of production was shut down, as you probably remember. Yeah. And so nobody was working and doing live TV and then it was all remote. But our particular segment, because of the nature of how, you know, um, everyone was being so precautious, our segment just got put on hold for about six months. 
And I remember thinking, this is such a gift. So my business doubled in that year. This was 2020. And the next thing I know, I receive an email saying, listen, we're going to pay you for the remaining you know, episodes on your contract, but we're actually exiting this partnership. And so your services will no longer be needed. They were so worried how I would feel about it. And I was just like, yes, because I didn't want to bail on them. But I was like, this is so anointed. Do you know what I mean by that? Absolutely. I and went forward. It was awesome. What an incredible gift that you had the three years to cultivate your businesses, to really dive in and explore all of where are your passions and, and what, are, what are your methodologies and what do you want to offer and how do you want to bring that all together while knowing that the universe was supporting you financially through that contract and then to get paid for those last episodes. I mean, what, what an incredible gift. You know, it reminds me so much of what um, one of my spiritual teachers, Dr. Reverend Michael Beckwith from the Agape International Center, uh -huh. you're probably familiar with him. Yeah. And I remember he said, because this is where I think a lot of women and a lot of people in general get stuck and they don't believe they can live their life free by design because they get caught up in the how. I wanted to be on extra. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. It took 10 years for that dream to be realized. And it showed up in a retail segment, which wasn't what I thought it would be. Right. But Reverend Michael Beckwith used to say, let the how be the wow. And mm. then, right. And like, if you just tap mm. into that and put your focus there, and then it was like, okay, I'm feeling this call to grow my podcast, to grow a coaching business, to be a spiritual entrepreneur. I didn't know the how, but if we get caught up in the how, we get stuck and we don't yeah. think it's possible. So the wow is just following the nudge and going forward one step at a time. Yeah. Le answering the call, right? Being present, receiving, and then trusting. So even within that, even when you're trusting, even when you're letting the how be the wow, Undoubtedly, there's moments of fear or negative self-talk of uh, some limiting beliefs or doubt that may arise. How did you navigate that when those, when those moments appeared? Well, it's a great question too. And you know, it's so interesting because the answers are always so similar and almost seemingly trite but they're so profound because they're fundamental. So bottom line is, is that I, I, I made every part of this journey, whether it was being on TV for 4,000 hours and 10 years, because I was on other uh, shows before then, um, and then transitioning into starting a podcast where the imposter syndrome was just massive. You know, and a lot of people just assume that like, oh, you were on TV for 10 years and you've logged all those hours of live production, right? And so how could you have any doubts, worries, or fears? Well, it's easy because we're all human and we worry about being judged. We worry what others will think, but mainly it's because we're judging ourselves. So what I've done every step of the way when I get conscious enough to remember is take me out of the equation. So even mm. in my segment, I remember deciding instead of getting so caught up in like the outfit that I'm wearing and what my weight was and how young and pretty I looked or all that other stuff that's just BS and keeps so many of us small, right? The, 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 the surface stuff that the ego just loves to attach to and keep us small. And I just remember thinking, what if I walked in and my only job was just to serve love? How can I serve love even more right now on the set, right to the camera, to the viewers, to your viewers and listeners now? So I made it be not about me and only about how can I serve? And I even really wanted to embody love and joy and the celebration for life, no matter where you are in the journey, because where focus goes, energy flows. That's It's a very famous quote by Tony and many others, Tony Robbins. So I would say getting myself out of the way every single time and remembering who is this for? And even if it's just one person that I can reach right now, then I've done my job. I've answered the call. That is such a powerful golden nugget that our listeners can implement right now. But for those who say, oh, well, that's great, but how do you take your ego out of it? What would you say to them? What's something they can do right now to get unstuck, to remove their ego from the equation. 
That's another great question. I would first have to um, have an understanding of what their idea of ego is. Mm. And so for me, it would, so ego for me is a non-conscious mind. It's just the monkey mind, right? But a conscious mind is present. Mm. And so just that, a breath, take a breath, come back to this now moment. Everything is okay. You're safe. It's okay to be afraid. And it's okay to move forward while being afraid, afraid. But until you let your mind know who's running the show, consciousness, that we're not separate from this grand divine energy and realm of infinite possibilities. And that sounds a little out there, but it's just the truth. And we're being asked to wake up to more and more and more of who we really are right now. And so, yeah, it's getting clear. What is ego for you anyway? And then once you've decided like, oh, well, that's not who I really am, right? I'm a beautiful light being and I'm here to serve and to give and I am worthy of being seen and heard. So it's a lot of self-talk. But once you condition and discipline your mind, you become devoted to who you want to be versus what you're afraid of being perceived as. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So take us on the journey of who you were before your great awakening, who you are now, and who you feel called to become. Mm. Now, may I ask what you're referring to so that I'm very clear about the great awakening? The, the, you have been going through some amazing transformations over the last six months to a year where you have really gone inward done the work, taken the time to reflect, taken the time to, to get clear. And I would love for you to share some of that process with our audience, because I think so many people are going through that at this, in, in this time. So if we are referencing a global mass awakening um, that has been caused, and you'll have to let me know if this is what you think my great awakening has been, because while we know each other, we don't, we haven't really had a, a deep conversation until right now. Um, so the mass awakening that's happening um, has been caused by uh, what some would refer to as a, a mass uh, hypnosis with the mainstream media. And it started with the COVID crisis. I'm not denying COVID and I'm not an anti-vaxxer, FYI. Um, I'm absolutely pro-choice for um, body autonomy for whatever you want to put into your body. Um, but because there's been so much, some would call tyranny, coercion, uh, censorship, and you name it. And if you've done any sort of research, you're fully aware of this, of everything that's happening on the other side of the mainstream media narrative, um, then this is causing a lot of people to wake up to what is going on. You know, when you take it back to the origin of why is this happening and what's in this injection and all this other stuff, right? So it's caused a massive polarization, not only here in our country, America, but also um, around the world. But it's now to be an estimated way over 50% of humanity has awakened. It's like something's something's up, whether they're, you know, injected or not. We're, we're waking up to how do we fight for our freedoms? So where was I before? Completely ignorant. And ignorance is often bliss. I did not know how tight it is, tied in everything is to honestly, for lack of better term, The Matrix, if you go back to that movie of 1999, you're like, oh my gosh, the writing is on the wall. And so how do we break free? Well, that requires a tremendous amount of courage, an unbelievable amount of bravery and sovereignty. And so as I was waking up um, and just beginning to be willing to do research, to connect the dots, to invest hundreds of hours, I um, there was just no turning back. It was very clear to me uh, what was going on behind the scenes that I had been blind to. And so it was extremely painful, excruciating. Uh, in the beginning, I really honestly, quite frankly, didn't know if I could make it through. And then 
I began to embody more strength because I decided to focus on a victorious future versus a grim one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I started to get really empowered because my spiritual work, and this is truly the great awakening, the mass awakening, the grand ascension, however you want to refer to it as, you want to be free by design. It's like unplugging from anything that's centralized and mandated and who are you and what do you want? What do you stand for? And all of it can be included with something that um, I have learned uh, from Aubrey Marcus, who has an incredible podcast uh, called United Polarity. And so I believe that humanity is in this together and I'm here to help serve anyone who wants to be brave and just simply stand for their truth based on their own research, their own analysis, their own learning. and, uh, and there's not a, a public place for that in the typical social channels, but it is explosive behind the scenes. So we're not alone. Yeah, yeah. And is that what inspired your program, Liberated Leadership? Tell us about that. Yeah, so the first step that I, I made was shifting the entire focus of my podcast to cultivate conversations around sovereign leadership. And uh, and then I ended up um, hiring a coach. I went into her into a five month program. We're still in it. Uh, a deeply spiritual program, like learning to attune to the archangels, learning about, you know, crystal healing. And that's really where I started to expand um, into my awareness of this divine alliance that is truly waiting, waiting to support us and protect us and guide us. And so along those lines, um, I ended up meeting someone uh, by the name of Michael Eisen. And together we had been dreaming of how can we help others step up, rise up, be brave um, and find their unique role and get out of that that wildly um, emotional roller coaster of like what's real, what's not real and all that other kind of stuff that's out there. So Liberated Leadership is a three month container where we take you uh, first through a process of understanding what you know and 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 how that's impacting you and then to reclamation um, which is reclaiming your sovereignty and your personal power then we go into integration which is like okay now what do I do with this which might be something just locally and and small within a community that maybe you help to organize or you participate in. You don't necessarily need to shout anything from the social media rooftops or on a podcast like myself, but your voice matters. And then the final phase is activation where we go through group coaching and mentorship and where everyone is out there um, embodying uh, all that they have been liberated from that was formerly holding them back. And now they're standing really firm for the unwavering faith and truth that they that they believe in. Amazing. And you have helped hundreds of people to really find their voice and craft their message and launch their podcasts. So you have created this incredible army of people who now have platforms to speak their truth, to showcase others. How does that feel? It's so deeply fulfilling. What a great question. I love the feel questions. Um, You know, part of my purpose that, by the way, uh, has remained even with this mass awakening. It's like, you know, it may have shifted ever so slightly in terms of programming, but it's to awaken millions to their infinite potential. You, you, You said that at the top of this conversation. And the reality is, is that it's very close because there's a ripple effect. So when the people that we help um, bring their voice and vision to life by starting a podcast, you know, for example, because we have the only done for you podcasting uh, production and master coaching program in the world called the Podcast Accelerator. And um, and so they're people just like me and you. They've stepped up, they've learned a thing or two, they're deeply passionate and they want to serve. And so watching them get out and grow their show and, uh, and stand for what they believe in. And it's very diverse diverse and so beautiful and so profound, whether it's a business professional, an entrepreneur, a life coach, a stay-at-home mom, someone who likes to knit. Um, We've seen it all. And they find their audience and they find their community and they create more community and they really grow. And uh, so that ripple effect of what their podcast is doing and how it's expanding, it's, um, it's a direct connection to me answering that call 
back in the day at Tony Robbins date with destiny. It's like, wow, it's really happening. You know, you can't underestimate the power of one conversation and how then that might impact another conversation and another conversation. You have no idea where it's all going to go. Right. So, so many people get caught up in like, I want to reach the masses. That's part of my mission. But it's like, okay, start right where I am. Have a conversation with Ellie and let's just see what happens. Yeah. How do you, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One <laughs> bite at a time. Uh, so how do you change the world? One conversation at a time. One connection at a time. Um, I love that. And I love that you have answered that call and that you are so aligned in your mission and your purpose and the way that you show up in the world and the way that you serve from such a pure place. So you are an incredible mentor to so many. And you have mentioned and, and referenced some of your great mentors, some of the people that you have worked with. What has been the most profound piece of advice that you have received from any of your mentors? Mm. There's a couple of things. So what Tony Robbins got me present to first, which was sort of like the rocket ship of me stepping into um, what I'm doing today. And it is all around living in a beautiful state. When you change your state, your physiology, your mental attitude, all of it, right? Um, you can do anything. Um, but when you're in kind of a low vibe state, nothing really happens and you just kind of see the worst in everything. But when you're high vibing and you learn to raise your own frequency, everything in life is extraordinary, right? It's all a gift. It's all a blessing. But now four years later, um, my, my personal work has deepened. And so what's happening now is I'm really working with, and this could sound a little out there, but I think you can be with it. I'm working with my angels and my guides and my ascended masters. I have an entire divine team that I discovered in the side of the last nine months of my very, uh, acute, uh, awakening, uh, is that I'm not alone. And, and so I've learned now to commune and to ask for guidance and to ask for verification that they're with me. And, and I have to be honest, where I learned that is by watching a YouTube show. I've never met him. His name is Michael Sandler. He, he hosts Inspire, Na Inspire Nation on YouTube. And by the luck of, or grace of God, I came across him maybe six months ago and now I'm just completely obsessed. So he's really helped me to learn how to do that. And then by the guests that he, he has on, I will then go and follow them. And so he's been a beautiful catalyst for me to discover what's possible in the infinite realm. All things are connected. Yes. All, all things are connected and everything in its divine timing and its divine way, right? Yes, so. I love that. that's exactly it. And we put our faith there and we learn to embody self-trust. See, we're so afraid oftentimes to like, should I do this? Should I do that? Should, oh, wait, I shouldn't do that. What are they going to think? And I get it because I used to do that all the time. And I still get it back to your question of like, what about when the worry and the doubt and the fear comes up? Are you kidding? The stand that I'm taking for what's going on in the world, it the silence in this space, especially amongst women is deafening. I can't even tell you how grateful I am for the opportunity to even have that little bitty discussion about it right here, Ellie. It's brave. Now it's where we're headed and we're going to see more and more and more of that. But when you step out into that lane and you're like, whoa, it's kind of quiet out here. It can feel scary because everyone's so worried about cancel culture. So no one's doing anything that they really want to do anymore, right? Very few. But when you learn to embody self-trust and self-reliance and know that you're not alone with the invisible realm, that is the most powerful divine guidance, you go forward one little step at a time. Amen. So what is something as you're connecting to the divine, as you're progressing on your journey, what is something that you wish someone would have shared with you earlier? I wish so much so, in fact, that I could kind of cry thinking about it. I wish I had, would, I had discovered my divine team a long time ago. I wish they taught it in elementary school. I wish that, you know, 
it was mandatory that we learn meditation and mindfulness and prayer and time in nature. I wish that we could understand that the, the creative process of all of earth is within us. We're not separate from that so that we understand our true personal power, not from an egoic sense, but in a beautifully orchestrated you know, um, unfolding. That sounds a little out there, <laughs> I know. Um, but I wish I would have learned that so that I could have had a true self-confidence. Mm. And, and again, that's just like this this place of deep empowerment of like, you know, Marion Williamson had a had a beautiful poem, remember that um came out many, many years ago, probably over two decades ago. And it starts with our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And I have the whole thing memorized and I could go on, but that's just it. And yet we've forgotten. And so when we see a beautiful sunset or an incredible mountain range, you know, or a beautiful river, we tap back into nature and we're like, yes, there's a remembrance. So I wish that I would have disciplined myself to devote the time to really growing in that awareness. But I'm here now and all is in divine timing and there's no turning back, but dang, it's incredible when you know you're not alone in that way. Yes, yes. You are not alone. You are never alone. You are always supported and always guided when you are present, when you come home to yourself and take a breath mm -hmm. and get still and listen. So you've, you've referenced trusting and your guidance and your intuition. To someone who is new on that journey or who has not yet really begun that journey, they have not stepped into that, what is a first step that you could recommend to them, something that they could do to begin to recognize their intuition? Mm. So I have a lot to say on this. Um, intuition is a direct channel to Christ consciousness, to the divine, to however you want to refer to it. It's all good. Um, and if that's not clear, then it's going to be really difficult to even discern between, let's just say, fear and intuition, which is a very big question that so many have, right? And I used to have that all the time. Like, How do I know? Is it intuition or fear? And the truth is, is that first you got to get that channel clear, right? So clear mind, body, and spirit. So one of the parts of my mass awakening and, um, and journey this past year is I let go of alcohol completely. I let go of any sort of frequencies that no longer res uh, resonated. If it was like sort of lower vibration within certain social circles, even where I lived, I had an identity around Santa Monica, California for 20 years. I loved it, never thought I would leave it. Just invested $50,000 in 2020 during the year of lockdowns. We had eight months of that in LA to remodel my place. And in 2021, by the fall, it no longer resonated. It was just like, whoa, I got to get out. And I left overnight. And I put everything in storage and I was like, I will know what's next when it's time to go there. So and you got to get really clear on the mind body connection piece in order to tune into the intuitive channel. That's a direct guidance from all that is. So there's that. And I just offer that as a loving recommendation, alcohol, drugs, you know, social scrolling, distractions, food. We all know the things in which we numb ourselves out. Right. Mm -hmm. And then television or Netflix or all those kinds of things. It's like, is the content content conscious? And am I feeding my soul? Am I feeding my mind, mind just trying to versus just trying to dump it because I don't want to feel what's there? The second piece is that once you've done a little bit of discipline on that, right, then it's like start to observe reactions versus intention, reaction versus intention. And then don't, for the love of God, judge yourself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so horrible. I reacted. I, I, I you know, I lashed out in that moment then you've got to come back to yourself if you really want to grow in this area and, and transcend it. So first accepting that, getting clear on what that was, what was the gift in that for you and taking full 100% radical responsibility. It's never about anyone else. Anything that we're experiencing in life is a direct reflection of what's happening in our nervous system or our stacked stories over the decades. And so once you take ownership over like, ooh, what's going on in my nervous system, then you can begin to regulate it by getting present with breath work again. 
And then from there, you decide to make a move because your intuitive channel is now clear. And you can ask your guides and your angels and your ascended masters if you've learned to cultivate that communication. Well, I'd love some guidance. What should I do right now? And you'll begin to get the answers. It's really beautiful. And for thank you for, for diving into that process. I think it is a extremely helpful step-by-step -step process that so many can follow. So when they get to that stage where they're asking for guidance, what is your biggest tip for helping them to discern when they're thinking they're hearing an answer, whether that is ego, mm -hmm. fear, a, their, their guides, or, or themselves? So there's something in in the realm of of the, of the divine field um, known as signs, symbols, and synchronicities. So first it will, sh and then there's there's another phrase sort of or analogy referred to as the feather brick truck. And so, <laughs> right? I think and, we all know the feather bear brick truck. <laughs> exactly. So we're always being guided, but not necessarily listening. And so once you start to see the signs and you actually pay attention, like let's say a butterfly just takes flight right in front of your face, you're outside and you're just on your phone, right? And maybe that's a sign from your angels and your guides and or intuition, right? However you want to refer to that. And it's like, look up and then maybe look up and you see the most incredible cloud formation with the color that reminds you of someone that's passed on. And maybe that's a beautiful message to say, I'm with you. I see you and I love you and you're not alone, right? But oftentimes we don't even pay attention to the butterfly. We stay in our phone and we miss the whole thing. So that could be something like that. So it's like learning to notice the whispers and the nudges and then learning to trust the deep inner knowing also referred to as sovereign, sovereignty about when to make a move, how to make a move, where to make a move, right? It is a discipline. But if you try it and you start to tune in and you actually get present, you'll know. And then you won't even question, is this fear or intuition? This is a process. It's a journey, but you'll get better and better and better at it. And then before you know it, you don't really ever make a move without it. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is a process. It is a journey. Mm -hmm. It is a practice. And I love something you said earlier, with which is don't judge yourself. Yeah. So especially as you're going through your your own awakening for for the audience, your own process, your own process of questioning, your own process for for contemplating who am I, who am I really, who do I want to be, what do I value, what do I want to contribute in the world, how do I want to serve, how do I want to show up. Don't judge yourself. Yeah. Show yourself some grace because it's it's all a process. Absolutely. So how how do you, Michelle, when you you referenced, you know, when you're a trailblazer and you're out there and it's uh you look around and there's no <laughs> you're at the front of the pack <laughs> or you're the only guest at the party so to uh, so to speak how do you tune out the critics how do you tune out the noise so that you can stay aligned and sovereign on your path hmm i'll be really honest um there have been moments when i have been in the fetal position crying my eyes out and so scared and it's, it's felt like why me i don't want to do that i could destroy everything that i've ever created and built and i was like oh my gosh observing those thoughts and then i was like that right there that fear it's gonna keep everyone stuck in small and silent. And by the way, also in massive compliance. So they're never thinking for themselves. They're never ruffling the feathers. They're never deciding for themselves. And so um, there have been there have been several podcasts on my on my show, for example, where it was out, and then by noon. That day, I'm like, oh, God, I got to take it down. I got to take it down. I, 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 <laughs> I can't yeah. believe I shared that. And then a little voice would say, or you could own it. Mm. 
And so the lesson for this past nine months is own it. Whatever is coming through, own it. Now, I will also say that there is a lot of grace, right? So who we are, and my, my guess is that whoever's drawn to your show is going to be in a similar uh, sort of path of life. I don't have a lot of toxicity. I didn't get a lot of backlash. I didn't get a, I didn't, I don't even think I had anyone unfollow me. Maybe they did. I don't really check that stuff, but I had earned enough credit and equity over the years of putting out such service and love and consciousness and positivity that was real and authentic and full of integrity. So I became known for that. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting a lot of backlash and if it is sort of dramatic out there in the social tapestry, then that might be a good time to not judge it, but just check in with yourself. And it's like, mm, is this a theme? Is what's happening on social media as an example or in certain conversations a reflection of maybe how I'm talking to myself? And so where can I give myself a little more grace as I'm learning so much right now? I mean, we've all, if we're on the awakening journey, we are, we have gone through so much change and transformation this past two years, right? Mm -hmm. So the only thing left now is to own it and to move forward and then to make peace with wherever you're out of alignment with uh, not serving from your highest self. Mm. Own it. Yes. I love that. Yes, and own it. <laughs> I love that. And as we start to wind down here, let's imagine it's coming to the end of your life best lived. A life where you are fully conscious, fully awake, fully liberated, fully sovereign. You have served every day in your highest potential. You've loved, you've played, you've laughed. It's the end of your life. What do you want to be remembered for? Uh, so I work on a new primary question uh, virtually every year. It's something that I also learned at Date with Destiny, which I highly recommend for anyone who's called. And uh, primary question is the, the loop that you play in the back of your mind um, in conversation or while you're, you know, just when you're conscious. So my primary question for 2022 is how can I be even more present right now? Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything else that I would want to be remembered for that's more important than that. When I'm present, I'm loving, I'm radiating love, and I'm, I'm not forecasting a future. I'm not living in the past and attaching stickies and stacking the evidence as to why I can't connect with you, right? Not you, but the, the sort of, you know, metaphorical you or uh, euphemistic you. And so when I'm present, I'm just aware of how blessed life is and how, how blessed I am and how grateful I am to be in this moment. And so if I could be remembered for a while, I just felt really seen, mm -hmm. really connected with Michelle when I was with her. It's like no one else even existed. If I, if I can embody that consistently, I think that is a really beautiful life well lived. Amen. Amen. Now, are there any parting words of wisdom or final thoughts you would like to share with the audience today? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Trust the journey, trust yourself and learn how to cultivate that if you don't have it. And we've shared a lot about that today um, in this conversation, but learning to go within, there's never been a more critical time. We are in a pre we are at a precipice and there is a mass awakening. And it's so much more than just like, whoa, what's going on in mainstream media? How come all this is happening? You know, this is a deep opportunity to look within and to decide who you want to be. And so that can feel really intimidating in the beginning to know that you have all that power. You have all the power to choose how you're going to be in every single moment, how you're going to navigate the extreme polarization in conversations, how you're going to move forward to something that's calling you that requires you to be so brave. You didn't even know that you had that kind of strength and fortitude. And you go one little baby step at a time. Any step is an important step, but make the step. Trust yourself that you will be okay. And the path will be lit for the next step. And then the next step, it is a journey. It's called life and it's beautiful. Amen. So how can people connect with you, Michelle? How can they learn more about your programs? Uh, where can they find your podcast? 
the best place to find me. I'm on all the social channels, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, but you can just go to michelle-sorrow.com and that's S-O-R-R-O.com. Amazing. Everyone run out and connect with Michelle. She is incredible. And as you have heard today, so full of wisdom, mm -hmm. so just so full of heart and passion. So go connect with Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been an honor and a pleasure. Ellie, the honor is all mine. Thank you for creating a platform to help people truly design their lives of freedom. I love it. Mm, thank you. Till next time. Mm -hmm.